Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I am the father of the Effortless English system. I train you, I teach you, I help you, I coach you. To speak English fluently, you speak English powerfully, you speak English confidently, you speak English effortlessly. When you join and commit to my VIP program today, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there and commit, commit, commit to my VIP program. You will succeed. A different topic today, we're going to just talk about weight loss, so a fitness topic, a health topic, health and fitness topic, something different. We talk about a lot about philosophy, we talk about meaning, we even talked a little bit about self-defense yesterday, but today I thought, uh, let's talk about weight loss, mainly because I'm doing it myself again, and I just want to kind of review the best, fastest and simplest way to lose fat and to keep off the fat because health is important guys health is important health is more important than money (laughs) anyone who's gotten sick or had a serious health problem even a short-term health problem you suddenly realize that health is very very important much more important than money (laughs) and so again i guess i'm kind of helping you put money in perspective because we are going to we've started talking about money already and we're going to talk a lot more about money this month and next month probably you know I'll be talking about money and business and work because of my business English conversations course which is now ready we'll be talking about money a lot because of our book club your money or your life so it's important we all know that socially in our social world money is important I don't disagree. I agree. Money is important. Money is very, very useful. In our modern world, money is a useful tool. It's part of our social game. You know, the game we have, the rules of our society, uh, socially, our economics depend on money and making money, uh, mastering money. So I completely agree with all that. We all know that. It's obvious. But the important thing is, and the danger is, that we can't lose perspective. When you lose perspective, it means you, uh, it's kind of like you're too focused on something. Perspective, it means if you step back, you see everything more clearly. So we, we know money is important, but we just, we need to understand that it's not most important, right? We under, there are priorities in life, right? We priorities. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three, right? So money is important, but it's not number one. I would say number one is, you know, your faith and your family. Maybe health. Those probably be the top three. Faith, family, health. (laughs) Okay. Those three are all more important than money. So we just have to, and the reason this is important is that right now we live in Brave New World. We know this. We live in the Matrix. And so we get so many messages from the media and from other people telling us money, 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 buy, 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 you know, things and money, buying and money. So that what happens is we lose perspective. We, meaning many people, lose perspective and they start to see money. They make money too big. Okay, they start to make money like... They focus on money more than they focus on family. They focus on money more than they focus on faith or even their health. Of course, if you ask people, you know, intellectually, consciously, they will they will tell you, oh, of course, my family is more important. Of course, uh, my faith is more important. But if you, you have to look at actions, not words. And at actions, it means how much time, how much energy, how much mental focus do you put on money compared to your family, your health, your faith, you know, all of these other things, and maybe other things too. 
So that's what it means to have perspective. So we're going to talk about money. We're going to learn about money. I want you to be financially independent. I definitely do want you to do that because it's very, it's a very good thing. It's wonderful. But I don't want you to, be, as we talk about money, I, I want to balance this, constantly balance it, reminding you always that never forget that money is less important than these other things. That is just so important to remember. Okay? Now, we're going to talk about health just very quickly. Simply. So the title of today's show is, you know, How to Lose Fat. Effortless fat loss, I think is the title, actually. I put effortless fat loss. Simple fat loss. And what I'm teaching you today, what I'm telling you today, really comes from Cole Robinson at Snake Diet. But I'm just going to review. There are lots of benefits of fasting. Uh, We're not going to talk about all of them. We'll talk about other benefits of fasting later again. But I just want to talk about fat loss. And the reason that it's important that in many countries now, Many countries, definitely North America, so Canada, the USA, and Mexico, in fact, all three, it has become, it has become normal, normal, not healthy, but normal. It has become normal for people to become fat. Mm, I think usually they start becoming a little fat after age 20, 21. So in America, it's common. People talk about the... What do they call it? The freshman five or the freshman 15, something like that. Freshman is the first year of school. So in other words, it's very normal that uh, kids, young people, we shouldn't say kids because they're adults, young adults, they leave high school at age 18. Many go to college, they go to university, and it's very normal for them to gain some fat. 10 pounds, 5 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, something like that. They don't become super big, but they gain some fat. And it's it has become normal. And because it's normal, many people accept this. They think it's natural. They think it's just natural. Oh, well, when you're as you get older, you naturally will get fat, like it's genetic or something. But it's not natural. It's very unnatural and unhealthy. Very. So this is not a natural thing. And I think this is happening more around the world, too. So certainly North America, it's very bad. Uh, I think uh, it's definitely without throughout the UK. This is also common. Lots of fat people in the UK. And it's starting to happen more and more in Europe. And even in Asia, which you know still has mostly thin and health, healthy people. But it's happening more. I'm seeing more fat people, even in Japan, even in Thailand, even in other Asian countries. Because it's the junk food, right? It's the garbage from, you know, the industrial food, the terrible quality food that is very common in North America is now, you know, becoming more and more popular everywhere. And this is very bad because fat loss is fat, rather fat gain, fat gain, becoming fat is unhealthy. It's unhealthy. It's not good for you. So there's the freshman five or the freshman 15, right? Then there's another big weight gain often happens now. Maybe let's say after age 30, after somewhere around age 30, again, people will gain a good amount of weight, maybe another 15 or 20 pounds. It's very normal, not healthy, not natural, but normal, meaning most people do it. And again, I'm talking about North America but and UK also. And then and it's starting to happen in other places. And then especially after age 40, after age 40, you will see that most people in America, in I should say North America, really, and the UK and Australia are fat. They're fat. And it's accepted now. Like, again, I can even remember when I was younger. How my relatives, like my uncles and my aunts and other people in my family, older people, all complaining about, oh, yeah, after telling me as a, you know, I was a kid at that time. I was like 20 something telling me, oh, you're thin now. But, you know, after 40, it's really hard to stay thin. After 40, you're you're going to get fat. Like everybody gains weight after age 40. 
They just said this as if it was some natural law. But it's not. It's not natural law. It's not healthy. It's not natural at all. It's a belief. And it's a, a wrong belief and a very unhealthy belief. But it is a strong belief. And it is happening, like I said, in North America, people over 40, the big majority, I mean, over 60% are fat. I'd say probably 85% are fat. My definition of fat, <laughs> right? They're not obese. Obese is super, super fat, but they're fat. They have, they're too fat. They have too much fat. They have extra fat that they don't need, and it's not healthy. 80%, 90%, something like that after age 40. And then it just gets worse. Age 50, even more fat. Age 60, even more fat. It's not healthy. So how do you prevent this? There's a very, 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 very simple way. If you're fat now, if you have too much fat now, there's a very simple way to lose it. And then how do you keep it off? Like, you know, I'm 51. I'm not fat. I'm 51 years old. And I weigh, well, right now I weigh 71 kilograms. I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Why that's important. 71. <laughs> but... You don't have to. And, you know, certainly like, in, say, in Japan here, where I am now, it's not normal at all. You see people who are in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s. They are not fat. They don't get fat when they get older. Not traditionally. They don't. Why? Because they're eating a healthy diet and they don't eat too much. They don't eat a lot of sugar. And they they do really basic exercise, but they, they're active, I would say. Maybe they're not working out, you know, like going to the gym, but they walk, walk, walk a lot. At least they walk a lot. So they're very active and they eat health, you know, eat a very healthy diet. And this was traditionally true all through Asia, you know, and for, even now it's still mostly true in Asia. You go to Korea, same thing. You're going to see mostly thin, healthy people. You go to, uh, you know, Hong Kong, you go to Taiwan, um, even th and out, down through Southeast Asia, it's the same thing. Nepal, India. Some exceptions, right? It's getting uh, it's getting a little worse now as more junk food from the West comes in, but it's still much, 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 much better. So obviously, it's not genetic. It's not genetic. So don't accept this. You know, this is what Tony Robbins calls you know having high standards. Standards are important. What's a standard? A standard is your rule for what is good, what is bad. It's your rule. What is acceptable, what's not acceptable. So the problem with this negative belief in America, people have a low standard. So they think, well, if I'm 30 pounds overweight, if I have 30 pounds of fat, that's okay. That's not so bad, right? It's a low standard. It's a bad standard. Whereas people in Japan, they think, if I'm five pounds overweight, that's bad. Their standard is very high. So if they gain five pounds, they start dieting, they start taking action very quickly because they don't want to get more fat. But in America, they look around, everybody else is fat. So they think, well, 30 pounds, that's no big deal. And this makes it easier for them to gain 35 pounds, 40 pounds, and it keeps getting worse for many people. And this issue of standards is true for all things. This is why I interviewed Matt, Matt versus Japan, Matt from Mass Immersion, about language. His standard for learning a language is super, super high. It's higher than mine. It's higher than Steve Kaufman's, who speaks many languages. It's higher than most foreign language learners, honestly. His standard for, for fluency, for example, in his mind, his rule, like what does it mean to be fluent in Japanese or fluent in a language. His standard is super, super, super high. It's basically native. He wants to sound like 99.9% .9 like a native. It's a very high standard because his standard was and is so high. Well, it made him take very big, very strong actions to achieve a very high level of success. Now, we don't all need that super high level. Like I said, my standard for learning Japanese is 
not that not as high as him. I don't need to be 99.9% native. I would like to just communicate effectively. <laughs> okay? So it's a little bit lower standard. But I can learn a lot from him because his standards are so high. Well, it's the same with health and fitness. So I'm not trying to run ultra marathons, run 100 miles or something, you know, like uh, 150 kilometer races. I am not a super power lifter or body lift, a bodybuilder. But I can learn from those people. They have very high standards, you know, for their their for their fat, the amount of fat they, they want, for their fitness level. So I do study them and I listen to their YouTube channels and I read their books because their fitness standards, their health standards, their standards for their body are very, very, very high. So I can learn a lot from them because they, they become experts. And, you know, my standard is just to ha be healthy, have a good level of energy, stay thin, and have decent strength. You know, I'm not a bodybuilder, obviously. <laughs> so this is important, though. So it's very important to keep that standard. So it's very bad idea to think, oh, yeah, it's okay to gain five pounds when I'm 20. It's okay to gain 30 pounds when I'm 30. It's okay to be 30 or 40 pounds overweight after age 40. No, no, no. That's a low standard, and it's going to cause you to become more and more and more unhealthy. Have a higher standard. Say, no, I can keep the same weight. You can be the same weight in high school, in university, when you're 30, when you're 40, when you're 50, when you're 60, when you're 70, when you're 80. You don't have to gain fat. You can keep basically your same level of, you know, basic. Uh, you can keep a good level of fitness and health, and you can keep that same level of fat your whole life. And it's important. If you get fat, it's it causes problems for your joints, your knees. Like I've talked about my mom. She has all these knee problems. Uh, even my dad has got knee problems now. A lot of it's because they're carrying too much weight. And of course, it causes lots of other problems. It can lead to diabetes. It can it makes you tired all the time. It can lead to other diseases. It's just bad. So let's talk about how do you do it. It's very easy. The simplest way. This comes from Cole Robinson. How do you lose fat? Stop eating. Don't eat. It's the easiest thing in the world. It's so, so simple. <laughs> you know, there are hundreds. There are probably, well, there are definitely thousands, maybe tens of thousands of books, diet books, about all these different diet books and diet websites and diet systems. And some of them have points like Weight Watchers, very complicated, all these point systems and counting all the calories exactly. And, uh, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that. Ah, oh, very, 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 very complicated. Unnecessary. Okay, it's very simple. If you're fat, don't eat. That's it. You want to lose fat? Don't eat. At all. Nothing. This is called fasting. Okay, it's called fasting as a verb, to fast. To fast means to not eat. There's something called dry fasting, which means also don't drink, don't drink water, but that has other benefits, but you don't need to do it for just for losing fat. For losing fat, you can drink water, drink salt water, salt and potassium water. But that's it. It is that's all you have to do. No weird diets, no complicated diets, no point systems, no counting calories, nothing. Stop eating. Just don't eat. That's all. So that's, you know, you all know that I got up to, I was at 80 kilograms back in, uh, what was it, February? Yeah, about in February. I was 80 kilograms. I'd gotten kind of fat, a little fat. For me, that's kind of fat. Definitely, you know, I'm around my stomach. Not healthy, not good. So I finally decided I watched Cole Robinson. I watched the snake diet videos on YouTube. And he convinced me immediately. So I started doing fasting. I did mostly two-day fasts. I would fast. So no eating for 48 hours. 48 hours, no food. Eat one moderate meal. Not too big. Kind of lower calorie meal. Low, mainly low carb. Low carbs, no sugars. And then I would fast again another 48 hours two days with no food so i ate one time every two days that was my the system i followed and 
in uh, it was about five weeks. In five weeks, I dropped 10 kilograms, which is about 22 pounds. I dropped 80 kilograms down to 70. Now, my mom, she started doing this. She's only doing, she's not really doing the system quite. She, she'll eat one meal a day, one meal a day. But she has lost 25 kilograms doing this, basically. Don't eat. She only eats one time per day. And I'm trying to get her to do the two days. I'm trying to, you know, kind of encourage her, push her to do the 48-hour fast. It's much more effective for losing weight. And honestly, if you are quite fat, you probably should do three days, right? Three-day fast, 72 hours, fasting for 72 hours. No food, 72 hours, just the salt water. Water with salt and potassium, sodium and potassium. Just drink that only, no food, for three days. Eat one meal, low carb, kind of a small meal, and then another three days, no eating. Eat one meal, and then another three days, no eating. Keep doing that until you get down close to the weight you need. Watch his videos for the details, okay? But it's the simplest thing. I mean, just imagine, it's so simple. You want to lose weight? Don't eat. Right? There's all these complicated... There's Big, big businesses and doctors and and books and videos and systems and all of this and it's really not complicated stop eating now the next issue people say well won't will you gain it back quickly because this is a problem with a lot of diets all these weird diets these strange diets that people might lose weight but then you know two months later they, they go back they go back to eating the old way and then they, boom, they get really fat again. So they lost the weight, but they gain it back quickly. How do you avoid that? Well, so this, that's my topic today. <laughs> because uh, I'm following, following again Cole Robinson's system. He recommends, and this is a good recommendation, because again, it's about standards, standards. So I chose a specific standard, a weight. This is what you do. You decide what is my like kind of perfect weight. What what do I want my weight to be? So for me, it's 70 kilograms, about 70. And I might go up a little bit like 70.5, 70.8, or I might dry, drop down 69, you know, but it's in that range. But what you do is, you know, what it means, Tony Robbins talks about this, to have a standard. So my standard is this. I weigh myself every morning exactly the same time. I wake up in the morning, go to the bathroom, and then weigh myself. So it's, so it's the same situation every day, exactly the same. After sleeping all night, then I weigh myself. And so all I need to do to keep the same weight so I don't gain weight again is that I've decided that if my weight goes above 71, if I... Weigh myself, if it's 71 kilograms or more, immediately I start fasting. Immediately I start fasting again. So normally I eat one meal a day, but if I go above 71, then I'll do a two-day fast. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm not eating today. Why? Because this morning I weighed myself and I was 71.3. So I, 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 I went above that standard, right? I, I, my standard is... Under 71, you know, 70.9 is okay, but 71.0 or more, not okay. So I take immediate strong action if I cross that line. I cross the line, 71.3. So what's the immediate action? Stop eating. I will stop eating until I drop under 71 again. Now, luckily, because I'm doing this action very fast, immediately... I probably only need to fast for two days. I only need to do a 48-hour fast, just skip my meal today, eat dinner tomorrow. I'm sure I will be under 71 again. And then I, every day, anytime, anytime today, tomorrow, in the future, I will do exactly the same thing. Anytime I go above 71, I immediately will do a fast, a 48-hour fast. And you can see how then it, it's almost impossible then for me to gain weight, really. Impossible, because I will stop it. I will not let it happen. See, this is the problem with people who, um, people who are, uh, what's, what's the word I'm saying? 
in anything exactly if you don't have a high standard. Like how do they gain the weight? One, they gain five pounds. Will they gain do another five, then fast. ten pounds. A, here, what, Forty-eight one hour fast. Ban this guy. And you can see how then it, it's almost impossible then for me to gain weight. Really, mm-hmm. impossible because I will stop it. I will not let it happen. See, this is the problem with people who. Um, okay, he's banned. People who are uh, what's, what's the word I'm saying? In anything, if exactly you don't have a high standard, like how do they gain the weight? They gain five pounds. Will they gain do another five. Then fast. ten pounds. All right. All right. So anyway, think about this. This is a, a very important way, and this is how you avoid. This is how you avoid anything where like losing your standards, right? Losing and failing is that you stop yourself when it first begins. Okay, he's banned. People who are uh, first uh, starts. What's the word I'm saying? In anything, exactly if you don't have a high standard, mm-hmm. like how do they gain the weight? You want to gain five pounds? Will then they gain do another five. Then fast. ten pounds. Right. Okay, and just let me just finish banning this guy really quickly. All right. So anyway, think about this. This is a, a very important way, and this is how you avoid. This is how you avoid mm-hmm. anything where like losing your standards, right? Losing and failing. Okay, we're back. So, for example, in your language learning, which connected back to language learning, if you need, if you have a standard, a rule, basically about how many hours per day. You will listen to English. A minimum, right? It's a, it's a, and maybe it's one hour, maybe it's two hours, maybe it's per week. You know, you'll do at least twelve hours a week, something like that. So then, and then you count it, you track it, you count it, you track it, and then you know, any time you drop below, you must take big action, right? You have to take immediate action so that you don't, it doesn't get worse and worse and worse and worse. Right, we call this a slippery slope. That sometimes, you know, one. Hmm, is there something wrong with the sound, guys? One second. Check, 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 check. If you take a like a a a, a bad approach, then wow, one second, guys. Looks like they're having sound problems. What is wrong? The sound pro. Hmm. Check, check, checking. Let me, just tell me if you can hear. Check, check, checking. Or it looks like we're having some audio problems. Hello, hello. Oh, the sound problem has gone. Okay, good. Sorry about that, guys. All right, we're back. Good. So you have a standard. And slippery slope means that if... Let's say, you know, you, you do something and you start doing something a little bad. It's just a little bit. It's no big deal. It's no big deal if it's just a little bit bad. But the problem is that one little bad thing can become a habit. And then, it, then you do another little bad thing. And then another little bad thing. And then another little bad thing. And then it can just drop down. So, for example, you're doing two hours of English a day. And then one day you do 90 minutes. Is that a big deal? No, not really. But... You, you need that standard because if you don't have a standard, if you don't stop yourself immediately, well, then what happens? Well, then maybe the next day you'll say, ah, oh, 90 minutes is okay. So then you do 90 minutes the next day and the next day and the next day. And then another, another day you only do 60 minutes, right? And it can, you can start dropping, dropping, getting worse and worse and worse until you finally quit. In English, there's an idiom we call this slippery slope, the slippery slope. So it's the same with fat, right? Like I'm 71 right now. Is that a big deal? No, I'm not fat still, right? But the problem is if I don't stop it now, if I don't fast now, if I don't take action now, then what happens? Oh, maybe it goes up to 71.5 and I say, oh, that's still not so bad, right? My standard is not very strong. Oh, no big deal. But then what will happen from there? Well, then it might go up to 71.8. And then to 72, right? And then it just gets worse and worse and worse. I have to stop it. So you have to have like a point, a line, right? A line where you say, this is my rule. This is my standard. I will not let it cross. If if it crosses, I will take big action until I go back. So you do it with your weight. It means you choose a weight. For me, it's 71 kilograms. If I hit 71 or more, I start fasting immediately until it drops down. 
And again, you can do this with your English learning. It might be a daily line. Maybe weekly is better. It's more flexible. So you have, okay, every week I do 15 hours. That's my minimum. My minimum is 15 hours of English. And if you count it every week, every week, every week, and if you drop down even just to 14 one week, then you have to immediately take some strong action. Okay, next week I'm going to do more. Next week I'll do 16. Next week I'll do 20. But you, you, you make changes immediately. You adapt immediately. You stop the slippery slope, right? You stop yourself going down. You keep that standard and you never let yourself get worse than that. And this is how you avoid getting worse and worse and worse. As I was saying before, that's how people become fat. How do people become fat? Well, they don't gain 50 pounds, right? 25 kilos in one day. No, what do they do? They gain five kilograms, but they say, oh, five's not so bad, and they don't do anything. So then what happens? Oh, then a few years later, they gain five more. Well, it's only 10. It's not so bad, right? They, they have no clear standard. So in this, in this way, over time, in months or years, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. This is why having that strong, clear standard is very important. And so for weight loss, it's very easy. All you do is you choose that one weight. You fast. You stop eating until you get to that weight. And then you weigh yourself every day. Have a scale in your house at the same exact time every day. I think when you wake up is probably best. When you first wake up in the morning, weigh yourself. Get on the scale and have a number. If it stays under the number, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. Continue eating as you are eating and exercising. Do everything like you're doing if you want. But anytime, even one day, it goes above that number, you immediately start fasting again, at least a two-day fast. Immediately, on the very first day it happens, you never let it go more than one day above that number. And in this way, you will never, ever, ever gain the weight again. If you're already thin, you will never, ever, ever become fat by doing this. It's impossible. If you actually do this, you will never become fat. It's impossible to do. If you're already fat, of course, you have to lose the weight first. And then after that, follow the system. Weigh yourself every day. But this is the importance of these kinds of standards, these hard, uh, strong rules you have for yourself what you will accept for yourself, what you will not accept. When you must take strong action. All right, let's get into the comments and questions. Sorry about the technical problems. I think I know what happened with the technical problems. Next time I'll mute my microphone. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's just jump on back and let me go through the comments here. Lots of people saying hello, good to see you. Okay, so Severinus says, Hi, I'm from Indonesia. I need this topic because I'm fat. How can I do get to the ideal weight? Stop eating. It's so simple. <laughs> Stop. It's so obvious, right? It's obvious. And somehow we don't like this idea because we're kind of mentally, we're brainwashed, we're programmed to think, oh, I must eat, I must eat, I, I must eat every day, uh, right? We have this addiction to food. But the, the answer is obvious. Stop eating. Completely stop eating. And then you will lose all the fat. It's so easy and it's so simple. It's, I say it's easy. The first couple days are not easy. When you first start, you maybe have a couple days where you're really hungry and you're really tired. Fair enough. But it's not, it's, okay, it's not terrible, okay? It's just a little bit difficult. But after that, it actually feels quite easy. You're used to it. It's no big deal. And it is super, super simple. It is, there's nothing more simple than not eating. Don't eat. So, Severness is simple. Watch the snake diet videos on YouTube. Snake diet like the animal snake. If you want to get, you know, more, lots of uh, ideas about how many days should you fast and, you know, all these other things you can do. Dry fasting, water fasting. There's so, there's many th ways, other things you can do. But the simple answer is just fast. Fasting. Stop eating. Stop eating. Don't eat food and you will lose weight.
yeah, like Mohammed Salim says, health is more important than money. Of course. We all know this. The, so it, I know it's obvious. Everybody will agree. If you ask somebody, is money more important or is health? If you ask them, they, every, almost everybody will give you the, the right answer. Oh, of course, my health is more important. But you have to look at the actions. If you look at the actions, you will see that, in fact, many people neglect their health. They don't take care of their health because they're too focused on money. They're very, they spend most of their energy focused on money and work and, uh, and very little energy, very little time focused on their health. So... It's not about what you say. We all know what to say correctly. It's what you actually do in your life, where you put your time and your energy. That's how you really know. <laughs> yeah, Namaz, very clever. Don't show me the money. Yeah, right. It's come from our new movie coming up, Jerry Maguire. The famous line to show me the money, but right, don't show me the money. Because it's kind of a joke in the movie. We'll see. It's, it's a joke. Okay, so Hilal asks a question. How many times should people eat or going to the gym at least four times in a week? Should, should you eat before going to the gym or after? I'm confused about this issue. Well, again, snake diet. Cole Robinson has a lot of videos about this exact topic. He does, a, he does power lifting, right? So he's doing heavy weights and he works out every day uh, if it so it depends how you're working out right if you if your exercising is mostly cardio like you're just running you're jogging you're doing bicycle you're swimming it doesn't matter you don't have to eat at all you don't need to eat but uh if you're doing hard weight lifting uh, probably a few hours before you lift weights some people will lift weights without eating they'll they'll eat after they lift but it'll hurt your strength right it, you'll, you'll feel weaker but there can be some other benefits to doing that so it's a little complicated about that so if you're really doing hard strength workouts like lifting weights watch the snake diet videos to get to figure out what you want to do for regular people like me i, I don't i don't do hard weight lifting i'm just i just i push ups pull ups and i do a lot of walking so, I, yeah, I don't, it doesn't matter, really. It doesn't matter. Right, Katri says, uh, control what you're eating and exercise at least three times a week. Yeah, and by exercise, I agree if you mean like hard exercise, meaning something maybe for strength. Right, you're lifting weights or doing push ups and pull ups, some kind of hard. For just activity, for example, like light jogging or, sw or light cycling or swimming, walking, you should do that every single day. Every day, you should do that. But the kind of hard muscle workouts, three, four times a week, something like that. For most people, you there are many ways to do it, but yeah, at a minimum, probably three. Yeah, right. Marianne says, people now, their top priority is money. That's why many relationships will fall apart because of money. Some people will show their true character about money issues. Indeed, indeed. You have to watch people's actions not just listen to what they say. Everybody says the right thing, but you've got to watch their actions. And this is true. It does happen where people neglect their families, their relationships, their friendships, uh, their health, lots of things because they're too focused on money. And by money, I mean making money or spending money, buying things, right? New phones, new, new stuff, new clothes, all this stuff. They're too, many, too focused on that stuff. Uh, what makes a difference for American people to gain fat after age 20? If the food is garbage, they're going to gain fat even if they're under 20. Well, that is happening, Nasser. That more and more teenagers are getting fat. Why 20? Because 
children and your more children, small children are becoming fat in America. You're seeing more and more even young children, like eight years old, 10 years old who are fat. So it is happening. In fact, it is. But um, why after 20? Because there are like, you know, your it's your metabolism. You maybe know this word. Metabolism is how your body, uh, it's the process of your body burning energy. And so it changes. Like for, for many, for teenagers, they're still growing, you know, age 15, 16. They're still growing, so their body uses a huge amount of energy. So they can burn a lot of calories, even, even if they are eating junk, garbage, sugar. Many teenagers will not gain weight. They can eat almost anything, huge amounts, and not gain weight, especially if they're active, right? They're doing some kind of sports or activities. So that's why. But eventually, you know, around age 20, let's say, 19, 20, 21, your body really is not growing anymore, right? You, you have your adult body. It's basically finished. <laughs> so the metabolism will drop down. You, you, the energy, your body will use a little less energy every day. It doesn't need. It's not growing anymore. It's not building anymore. And when that happens, then that's when often these kids, these young adults, will start to gain some weight because they were burning. They were eating junk before. It didn't matter because they were so young and growing. But then after age, you know, in college age, now they gain a little weight. And of course, this continues to happen in life. After age 30 or 40, same thing. If you continue eating lots of junk, you're going to start gaining a lot of fat because your body doesn't, it's not building anymore. It's already built and your metabolism might be slowing down. The other thing is that typically as people get older, this is also not good, but it's normal that a lot of these people, as they get older, they become less active. They do fewer sports. They don't walk around very much. They just drive in a car all the time. They sit in front of a TV a lot. They have an office job. They get a job and they sit on their butt in a chair all day. So all of these reasons is why that it tends to get worse as they get older. Yeah, this is interesting. Bufendra, I've seen this. In India, most women are fat, but men are fit here. I've noticed that. I noticed that traveling in India, that the women are more fat. Why? I don't know why. I'm not Indian, so maybe you know why. Like Vladislav says, normal is boring and often it's not healthy. Right. You have to remember the definition. What does normal mean? It doesn't mean natural. It doesn't mean good. It just means what most people do. So many times normal is bad, right? Most people are doing stupid things. Most people are unhealthy. So often normal is bad. Normal can be unhealthy. In America, normal is very unhealthy. Yeah, see, this is nice. Bill says, in Morocco, we have good food and a good price. Yes, there's still countries that there is a, there is a difference. Depends on which country you go to. There's big differences. And in some countries, uh, I've never been to Morocco, but I'm not surprised. You know, they still have local natural foods. They're not eating all just McDonald's and garbage and sugar and junk they're also more active. They're walking around all day, do, going places. And so they, that's why people are healthy for their whole life. That's the situation in Japan still. And most of Asia, I see it. It's still the situation in most places. Bill says Mediterranean food is bad. Uh, Mediterranean food is great. Japanese food is also great, though. Obesity is simple, but losing fat is too hard. It's not really, but I know what you mean. It's easy to gain weight because it's fun. Ah, eat a bunch of sugary stuff. It tastes good. But, uh, that, but of course, losing the weight means you have to fast. <laughs> Stop eating. It's not actually that hard, but it is. Uh, it requires some discipline. Uh, 
Vladislav, hey, today is my last day of my 20s, so you turn 30 tomorrow. Happy birthday. I'll turn 30 years old tomorrow. I consider you the most influencing man in my 20s. Oh, nice. That's very nice. Thank you. I've got a lot of red pill, whoops, from about English, education, money, etc. from you. Thank you, AJ. You're welcome. Thank you, Vladislav. And you always contribute such great comments and, and questions, so thank you as well. And enjoy your 30s. It's a good time in life. It can be a very good time. Okay, just some moving through some of these questions more quickly. Yeah, well, Saeed has a good point about David Goggins. David Goggins uh, is the best example for high standards in health and fitness. I recommend him for you. Yeah, that's another example of someone who has inc crazy levels. I mean, most of us would say crazy levels, kind of like Matt with Japanese. <laughs> a lot of language learners say, he's crazy. It's so high, his standards. And this David Goggins guy, is a, he was a Navy SEAL. He did lots of other things in the elite American military. And this guy, it's incredible the things he has done uh, physically. And he was fat and he lost all the weight and he's done like ultra, ultra marathons, you know, long, super double marathons, triple marathons. And he's abused his body. He tried, I think he set the world record for the pull ups. He did like a thousand something pull ups. Yes, his standard is very, very, very high. Higher than most of us. Most of us don't need to be quite that level, but we can be inspired by someone like him, right? You think, like I see that guy, David Goggins, I hear his stories, and, you know, part of me says, that guy's crazy. He's abusing his body. Wow. But another part of my body, I mean, another part of my mind says, well, okay, I if he can do that, then I at least can do something much easier. I at least can stay thin. I at least can walk two hours a day. That's nothing compared to him. So it's, I find those people inspiring, very inspiring. Okay, I'm going to jump to the bottom and kind of go back up. Uh, one second, let me. bottom and okay, kind of go back. back. Okay, uh, so let's, let's see. Going to the bottom. Hey, coach, do you recommend, along with fasting, taking cold showers? I'm doing... Oh, let me put this on the screen. Sorry about the sound again. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Let's try again. Emmanuel, would you recommend, along with fasting, taking a cold shower? Because I'm doing it myself. I noticed my energy level is high, my concentration level, and therefore lost a lot of weight. Yeah, you know, actually, I, yes, it's great. You know, there's that guy, I don't know, maybe you're following that guy, Wim Hof, H-O-F. I think he's Dutch. And he's really, you know, he's really into, I don't know what you call it, cold therapy, cold uh, conditioning, where you, uh, you take cold showers or cold baths, swim in cold water. But basically that, that, that exposing yourself, your body, your, to cold can have a lot of great health benefits. Mental benefits also, but health benefits too. So yeah, it's great. Uh, it does require some discipline. Like I really don't like cold water. So I, I have actually tried to do it. I've take, done the cold baths uh, at some times. I find cold showers easier to do. Cold baths can be quite tough. But um, yeah, there. if you look you can do some research about it. It's good for your heart. It's good for your body. Good for your immune system. So yeah, Emmanuel, that's great. Good for you. Oh, okay, Motion asks, why did you choose 70 kilograms as a standard? Is there a formula? Uh, not really. Like from, I kind of just, I, I kind of was, I was just losing weight. I had a general idea. And for me, it's just, I can just, it's more visual. I just look at my stomach and it's flat, you know, flat. It's not, there's no like 
a little you know fat coming off of my stomach. I look lean. My stomach's nice and flat. I feel good. I feel light. Uh, so that's it. You can find, I think there are different little formulas, but it depends on your muscle, right? So if someone is my same height, let's say another man, they're the same height as me, but they have a lot more muscle, well, then their perfect weight obviously would be higher. They could have the same fat, but they have more muscle, so they're going to be heavier. So it depends on how much muscle you have. Like I'm, I don't have a lot of muscle, so 70 kilograms is about right for me. I just do it by looking. Yeah, Maya says, brr, I don't like cold water. Me too, but it does have good benefits. It will, it, and you feel really good after. So sometimes the, during the cold bath or shower, it's kind of, uh, you know, especially if you don't like it a lot. But uh, after you really, it, it's kind of, you feel like kind of mentally awake and also relaxed. It actually, it does feel very nice. And you will often sleep really well after doing that. So I do recommend it. Check out Wim Hof. And his video and his uh, YouTube channel, or his book. He's got a nice book too. I read his book. Yeah, like Sergey likes cold showers. He says after the night shift to take a cold shower is really great. Yep, yep. Some people like to do it in the morning too to wake themselves up. <sighs> you know, it it is great. I I acknowledge that it's very nice. Yeah, Khaled says. 40 days without any sugar, I don't have any problems. Yeah, well, you don't need sugar at all. You can go 40 years without sugar. Yeah, and like Sukrat is correct here. Sukrat says, um, another fact nowadays, due to modern technologies, people become more lazy. Most of the daily duties are done by machines. That causes us not to be active. Yes, that's the other side, right? That... There's the eating side, which is very important, but then there is the activity side also where, especially in places like certainly the United States, the United States is, has a car culture, right? So this is another benefit of Japan where in Japan, at least in the cities, uh, people walk. You have to walk because most people don't have cars. They're using trains and subways, buses, but they also have to do a lot of walking. They must. And uh, because of that, they get a lot more exercise just from the walking. But in, uh, in the United States, in most places, people drive everywhere. So they, they just almost never walk. They walk very, very little every day. Now, there are a couple exceptions. You'll see in New York City, San Francisco, maybe Chicago, parts of it, where people do walk a lot. And indeed, people are more thin there. There are fewer fat people in Manhattan and in San Francisco and it's be I believe it's because mainly because people are walking a lot more maybe people are more focused on health also eating well okay a couple more and then we're gonna go Oh, wonderful. Vladislav following up saying, I think my 30s will be great. I'll keep following you. I'm con you convinced me family and kids are wonderful. I want to have a family by the age of 35. Good luck to you. Yep, as long as you're ready for it and you have a positive attitude about it, it is great. I think that's the main thing is having the right mindset about it. Okay, a couple more, and then we're going to go. Oh, that's a good question. Amina says, why are you putting sodium and potassium in your water instead of drinking water only? You can drink water only, but you lose, these are called electrolytes. Your body needs sodium and potassium. Uh, very much needs these two to function well. And you will feel much better fasting when you're drinking sodium and potassium. The fasting is much, much, much easier. There are no calories, zero calories, so it won't, it won't hurt the fat burning at all. But it will, you will have much, much, much better energy. You'll feel much better during the fasting time if you add sodium and potassium to your water. It definitely helps a lot. And I've, because I've done both. I've done only water, pure water only, and I've done sodium potassium. 
The sodium and potassium do help quite a bit. Okay. <laughs> Lisa says, I have one problem with our challenge. Now I sit and read English more hours than before, so I move less. I already feel that this is not good for me. I have to find a balance. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, well, you can maybe audiobooks will be the answer. Get it so you can walk around more. Speaking of the challenge, let's end with speaking about our challenge because we are almost to the middle of our challenge. We're about in the middle point of the challenge. So let me put this on the screen and let's just check in about our challenge. I hope the challenge is going well for you. Mm -hmm. Let me sign in again. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah, all right, sign in. All right, let's look at the listening challenge first. So how's it going with you? How's the challenge going? It's going very well for me. Now, I had a few days, probably, uh, what, end of last week, probably about four or five days where suddenly I felt my motivation drop. This is kind of connected again to our topic today, standards. And I just, I was getting tired. I was getting sick of all the audios I was listening to and repeating again and again and again. Uh, it was like my brain was just like, getting full of Japanese and I was just, oh, I don't want to do it. But I kind of kept the minimum standard. For me, the minimum standard was five hours. I'm like, I'm not going to do less than five hours. I have to do that at least five hours. So I just forced myself. And what I did was to keep the standard, I, I just changed. Carol talked about this. I'll show you her gab post really quickly. But I just decided, okay, I'm going to just, I need to do something new. My brain needs something new. So I started watching anime. I just started watching Japanese anime. There's one particular anime that I like. And, you know, I, can, I can't understand a lot of it. Maybe 5%, something like that, 10%, very little I can understand. But I can, because it's anime, I, it's visual, I get the general idea. I can understand the general idea of it. So I just switched. I started doing that just to continue getting Japanese. Because my motivation was low, I was, my brain was tired, but I knew I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. So I did this for maybe four days, four or five days. And I don't know, it kind of gave my brain a rest. And then now my hours, I'm back up to my normal amount, which is about seven hours a day. And I'm back. Now I'm listening to my mini stories again and enjoying them again. So I guess I just needed a break. So sometimes you just have to do this. So during the challenge, if you hit, if you, there's a point where you feel, oh my God, uh, I can't do this anymore. Don't quit. Just do something different. So maybe read a different book, listen to different audios. Uh, d just do something different. If you're reading a lot, change over and d switch and do more reading. If you're reading a lot, change and do more listening. If you're inside all the time, start go for walks and do it outside. Just don't stop doing English. Just make a change. So here's our listening challenge. We've got Sven. So, you know, basically we have the same people at the top now. In about six weeks, Sven and Anderson have both done over 600 hours. And Alamin and Julia Lemain and Shiro and Jose Ramos are all around 500 hours. And we got Jean... Ribeiro, Ayuma, Ayam Peromol, Julia Takita, and Alexander. That is our top 10. Nicely done, everybody. Very, very good. And, you know, everybody else too. I'm down there. I don't know. I think I'm like 19 or 17 or something on the, re on the listening. Reading. We got Edward Anderson and Sven and uh, Roberto De Santos. And Carol's back. She's back and reading a lot more, back from her vacation. So she's up there at number four now. Hikam, Mirwas, uh, Jennifer Melo, Salvador Ramirez, Peggy S, yes, and uh, Inderpal Chodari. It's, that's our top 10 in reading, and that's a lot of time reading as well. Good for you all. Very nice. Nicely done. 
And I want to read something really quickly. Here's what Carol said on Gab. This is our Gab group. Remember, gab.com. Follow me on gab.com. Carol wrote, I had another thought about the interview. This is my interview with Matt. And about wide or deep learning. I noticed since the beginning of the challenge, I'm doing less repetitions. I switched to wide learning. I tried to read as much as I can on the same topic. So I say, that's nice. That's a good idea. So I can cross the same words several times in slightly different contexts, different situations. That's how I get repetition and start memorizing new vocabulary. It's another way to work. I don't know if it's more efficient or not, but that's how I enjoy learning at the moment. I just want to share this experience with other Effortless English members to know if some of them are doing the same thing. It's a great idea. What you'll find is at different times you'll want different things. I find this myself. So in the last month, I was just repetition, right? Repetition, 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 repetition. I was doing the same mini stories and a couple other audios I have. And I just wanted to repeat them again and again and again. And it really helped because I felt like I it took a, I need a lot of repetitions to get you know, most of the vocab in my brain. I don't have all of it still, but I probably now have more like 80%. I'm understanding a lot of those mini stories now. And that's great. And my other audios too, my easier audios. But then, like I said, last week at some time, I suddenly felt like, ah, oh, my brain, like too much. It's like enough. My brain started wanting new things. And I, so I switched. I switched from deep and I started to focus on wide. And I just watched anime. And I, didn't re I don't repeat the same show every time. I just, but the good thing, it's called Detective Conan. But the, the basic topic of the anime is the same. It's like a little crime and he's a detective and he solves a problem. And there are like 500 of these anime. So I can just watch a new one every day. And there's still some repetition of the vocabulary. So that works. It's kind of what Carol's doing with reading. She's not reading the same exact book every day or every time. But she's reading many books or many things about the same topic. So she naturally will still get a lot of vocab repetition. So it's reading widely, but still getting that some repetition from it. And you can switch. And maybe sometime, maybe who knows, and maybe next month Carol will get tired of that. And she'll start to feel, oh, I want more repetition now. And maybe she'll focus on one audiobook and listen to it many times. Or not. Depends. I think it depends on your level. At the beginner level, I think that lots of repetition is very helpful. And even low intermediate, lower intermediate. And then maybe as you get more advanced, then you go more wide. But the, the thing is, you're the boss. Right? You, you are an independent learner. So this is the great thing. You can do whatever you want to do. When you feel you need more repetition, then do that. If you're getting bored with that, then do more wide. And then go back and forth and just don't quit. That's the main thing. Commit, don't quit. All right, guys. Lots of love to you. It's time for me to go take care of babies. So what is today? Thursday, right? So we got our book club coming up on Saturday. But I'll see you tomorrow. Lots of love to you. Mwah. Have a great day. As always, join my VIP program. Commit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there now.